Earl Jean had done the song. And there's Herman's Hermits, our own Peter Noon, who's here on Saturdays. Gosh, he does his own show. It's good stuff at Sirius XM 60s on 60s. By the way, he's doing a free show today in the Bronx. If you happen to be anywhere nearby, you can go check him out. And uh, this is a very cool thing, especially many of our listeners here on the 60s all know Michael Landon. I think mostly everybody could tell you who Michael Landon is. Well, I had become very good friends with his uh, niece for many, many years ago. And she just wrote a, a book, not just about Michael, but uh, about her uncle. But it's uh, about what goes on in her family. Let me get her on right now because I think you'll really like the story. But I want to play some Bonanza music just while we get her on there. Oh, here we go. Let me get her on. Christine Furley. How are you? Hey. I am great. How are you? It's been really good. I know I haven't seen you in about 10 years. It's been a while, but boy, uh, I've been following your entire career of what you've done. And for those that don't know, you are the niece of Michael Landon. And I know all our listeners, there are hardly anybody in America that would say, I don't know who Michael Landon is. And you have some fantastic stories you've been able to tell in a book you wrote called My Way to Heaven. And you just recently yes. updated it because I had a copy of it from about 10 years ago when you originally did it. But now you've added photos that go along with it and even more of the story. Yes, I did. I added um, there's two ways to, to get the book. You can get color photos or black and white photos. Yeah, I incorporated the photos throughout the book after the chapters that they're relevant to. Oh. A lot of people don't know that Michael had a sister who was my mother. And she had a severe prescription drug addiction problem. Wow. And, and now his mother, my grandmother, I also lived with, and she too had the same problem. So I basically grew up in a home with prescription drug addiction wow. around me. What a lot of people also don't know is that Dan Blocker introduced my mother and father. So if he hadn't done that, I wouldn't be talking to you right now. <laughs> Is that right? Your mother and father were introduced by Dan Blocker. Man. Yes. And I know yes. you had and I know you had a really cool story that uh, the first time you met Dan Blocker on the set of Bonanza, you what was that reaction that you had? I was a baby at the time. He actually came over to Michael's house in Encino and my mother had brought me over. And Dan had walked up to me and, you know, said, hi, baby. Hi. And, of course, I started screaming and crying. He's, he was a big guy, and I guess he scared me. <laughs> <laughs> he scared a lot of people. He scared grown men. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah, but if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here. be here. So I'm, you know, I'm grateful to Dan Blocker. That is, it's incredible. You know, Michael going to Hollywood always because of his sister, your mother, was the one yes. you were telling me at one point. She was the one who wanted to be the actress that went there and Michael was just there at the right time. Yes, that's true. My mother was pushed into the pageant scene by my grandmother, her mother. And my mother did win Miss New Jersey in 1954 and then came out to Long Beach to uh, compete in the Miss Universe pageant where she was runner-up. And in that transition, uh, Michael came out and went to USC. He had a scholarship because he was such a great javelin thrower. Oh. And he ended up going on an interview, an acting interview with a friend he was just kind of there as his wingman, as his right hand, just to support him. But they needed somebody else to read alongside of him. So they asked Michael to do it, and he was so great, they wanted him instead of... Is this when he becomes a werewolf, or is this even prior to the him becoming oh, a werewolf? It was, it was, oh, that was way prior, because oh, he had done other um, movies. And I include that in the book, the, the movies that he did. He was an albino in one movie. Um, he was a fighter. <laughs> wow. He was a like a fighter in this other movie. He was amazing. He had this natural talent and ability. He never took any classes. He never mm. took any acting classes. He never took any classes to learn how to direct, produce. He did all of that. He had all those hats yes. on his own. And it's just such an amazing accomplishment. And I was always so very proud of him. But he was like a father to me and he did save my life. And so that is another part of your story that I want to get into because of the uh, prescription drugs. Your, when your mom was going through that, at one point, uh, I think you were actually, he was your guardian at that point. Right? Well, he wanted to adopt me at one, at, at one point. I was in a foster home. 
okay. because of my mother's addiction. Um, the police took me away. He wanted to adopt me, but my mother wouldn't have it. I actually didn't want it either because I was the one taking care of my mother and grandmother. If I wasn't there, I was thinking, how are they going to eat dinner? You know, I would come home from school as little as six and cook dinner for them. Of course, they were TV dinners. It wasn't that difficult. But I took care of them, you know, and that's all I knew. So it wasn't any crazy thing to me at the time. And I also didn't have a father growing up. He didn't want me. And so I just, this is all I knew. To some people might sound as being a victim. I don't look at it that way. I look at it that this happened for a reason. And I turned a tragedy into a triumph because I am determined to help people going through this. And this opioid addiction has gotten completely yeah. out of hand. It's gotten way worse. I can't turn on the news without finding sure. out another celebrity passed away or overdosed. Even in my county, when I drive in, it tells not how many deaths there were by anything else but besides opioids. That is the number one. I wrote this book to help others who are either addicted to these drugs or have a loved one who has this problem. I want to help educate the world on what really happens when you live with an addict. And they think that these are medications that are acceptable because their doctors prescribe it. Yeah. And that was my mother's excuse. Wow. It is not okay. And those addicts and the loved ones around them are affected. You are so right about that. Hang on, I want to hear more about this. We're talking with Michael Landon's niece, Christine Furley, and uh, her stories about her uncle, Michael, that we all can relate to. We saw him as little Joe during the 60s for so much time and how much he's been able to help her out as well. Here's Sly and the Family Stone at 60s on 6. End of the spring. 